Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Alertis webinar series. My name is Sharice Ruan, Marketing Specialist at Alertis Technologies. During this presentation, Ryan Oakley, National Sales Director, and Gary L. Gamil, Software Engineer, will provide insight on Alertis Mass Notification System with a focus on digital signage and cable TV override solutions. Feel free to submit your questions during the webinar at any time, and they will be addressed during the Q&A session at the end of this presentation. This webinar is being recorded and will be shared with you after today's session. If you have any questions after this presentation, please email marketing at alertis.com. Now I'd like to turn it over to Ryan and Gary. Thank you very much, and I uh, appreciate everybody taking the time to join us this morning to learn a little bit more about Alertis and also our uh, cable TV and digital signage over override uh, capabilities. Uh, for the purpose of this webinar, uh, the first part will be either new or review for, uh, for some of our customers and, and prospects. Uh, where we'll review the Alertis system, touch on a lot of the capabilities, uh, challenges and problems we solve, uh, as well as uh, going through a focus on digital signage. So a quick overview of the webinar. We'll do a, a touch on the Alertis background. We'll touch on emergency notification challenges, a lot of the challenges that we help our customers solve that they communicate to us that we're instrumental in, in making sure that we're able to get the word out in an emergency. Uh, the next will be the Lotus Solution Overview, and then we'll focus uh, on the uh, digital signage and cable TV override capability. At the end, we'll finish with a demo where you'll see the uh, override capability. We'll do that with a panic button activation that uh, simulates an intruder alert, and that'll take over a cable TV feed that we have here in our Lotus demo room. So to touch on the Lotus background, we're a pioneer in integrated audiovisual alerting for all hazards. So what does that mean? We get the word out in the event of an emergency. Once founding in 2002, we've really grown and, and, uh, and brought on a lot of different customers of a lot of different ver verticals. We also uh, have a lot of military bases, large facilities, uh, the U.S. Capitol, um, quite a few uh, commercial corporate uh, campuses as well. And we're headquartered in the D.C. area, so we keep close tabs on the uh, regulations, the, uh, the communication protocols, those kind of things coming out of IPAWS, FEMA, some of the agencies that are really working to standardize communications uh, across multiple platforms. So how do you communicate in an emergency? Let's take a look at this. Uh, we've got a number of them pictured here. Could be your uh, Cisco phone, your giant voice. Could be uh, fire panels with PA systems, PA systems in the buildings, or even the digital signage. Uh, these can all be activated, but often emergency managers have to go to different individuals, different groups to activate those, uh, those systems. Uh, those systems uh, are um, you know, very difficult to activate because you have to go to individuals separately. Well, what Alertis does is they really focus on bringing those uh, individuals together uh, and, and assets together so that they can be activated very efficiently. Um, that's the second part is often when organizations try to activate more than one or two of their assets, it takes up to 30 minutes to activate that. We bring in the ability so that when you when you would send on a message, it automatically goes out to all those assets. So it takes that 30, 40 minute activation process down to uh, seconds, which is critical in an emergency like a, uh, a tornado, a uh, you know an active shooter situation, and those kind of things. So I noticed. Uh, so I mentioned that mass notification really applies very broadly to all different industries because we're all focused on a lot of the same challenges. Uh, there's a lot of the same codes or variations of those codes that really drive mass notification for your industry or your your business. I, I'd say primarily a lot of the the needs are around uh, the challenges that are are in place and the the desire to protect employees, uh, visitors, contractors, those kind of things while they're on campus so that they, they know that their their needs, their, their uh, safety is at hand, and also so that, too, you can get back to uh, business as usual if there is an event. You can quickly notify everybody, quickly uh, let them know the all clear, and then uh, move on from there. So uh, a lot of the emergency notification challenges are our customers that, uh, run into are probably similar to the ones that you have, have to often encounter, uh, some of them being locations with no way to notify. Uh, it might be a location that you don't have assets, you don't have a really good way to get a message in. Maybe the building is only staffed, uh, you know, six hours a day or 12 hours a day. How do you really cover that building in a 24-7 uh, 
uh, scenario. Alertis allows you to use technology in that building, activate that remote, and notify people within those buildings. Uh, special needs individuals, so the, just the mere fact that our system provides audiovisual notifications, multiple notifications, we're able to uh, display that for all, all those to, to receive that message. Loud environments, this could be an industrial environment, maybe it's a um, classroom that, or a cafeteria that's very loud, uh, you know, could even be an uh, environment where you're doing uh, some kind of production or uh, distribution. We're able to cut through that noise by doing a visual notification to all these different devices and, and screens to be able to get that through. Uh, there's a lot of places that our customers still, uh, cell phones aren't even allowed, or maybe the, the cell phone signal just is, isn't there to be able to use that as a primary notification device. So uh, healthcare institutions that have sensitive equipment, government and military loca uh, locations that have security concerns where you can't take cell phones, those kind of things. And lastly, uh, you know, a lot of the solutions on the market that, that our customers have looked at have difficulty reaching visitors and contractors. Those other solutions require you have a phone number for somebody, their email address. Just by the, the fact that they're on campus, they will receive a notification based upon all the notification endpoints that we're activating. We'll go through within the demo, you'll see all those endpoints uh, and see how we can uh, leverage those to notify those that are just visiting your building or campus. The other side of things is the codes are kind of catching up with the demand for mass notification from our customers. And that NFPA, a National Fire Protection Association, they're the codes that provide uh, direction mostly for fire alarming systems. But in 2010, they updated the codes to include mass notification. That's quickly moving from a suggestion and a model for implementing mass notification to actually required uh, uh, components when, when putting in new buildings or renovating new buildings. So, so that's a, a code to look at. Uh, you'll notice that all these codes uh, kind of have ADA accessibility uh, written into them, the audiovisual component, making sure that everybody receives the message. Uh, UFC, Unified Facilities Criteria, that's more of the DOD or military facilities. And then the Clery Act is more focused on notification for the higher ed space. So you'll see there's a number of codes that are developing. Uh, with an o overarching code uh, that's uh, kind of the, the codes of the land, mostly being the NFPA. So you'll see this in a lot of the codes, but really most of our customers implement this because it's smart for their business, smart for their employees, and smart for the visitors and their, their reputation in the industry. So to kind of wrap up the, the value proposition and how Alertus can help you is we provide a single point of activation. That doesn't mean just, just going to a web interface to activate it. That means you can activate it from a mobile phone, a panic button, uh, it could be an automated alert, those kind of things, and all those messages go out uh, to the integrated assets. So we bring in things like what we're going to focus on here with uh, digital signage systems, cable TV, but we can also bring in your VoIP phone systems, your PA systems, uh, your fire alarm systems, your desk, computer desktops, to really make it very easy to activate all your assets from one point. And then finally, we fill in the gap with innovative uh, alerting endpoints. This is the part that really makes Alertus unique. We've uh, innovated in, through the uh, patented alert beacon, some of our uh, panic button capabilities, to be able to uh, cover gaps, areas that, doesn't have, that don't have a uh, technology asset to be able to get the message out. So uh, say a loading dock where um, a, uh, a traditional PA system might not work, uh, there might not be any kind of asset to notify, we can easily and quickly put an alert beacon there and uh, notify those individuals uh, very efficiently. So to kind of wrap it up and bring it together, I mentioned that there's a lot of endpoints that we can activate. Here's a, a very good uh, visual of the different endpoints, including uh, um, panic buttons and those things that we can activate. Across the bottom, you'll see a lot of the ways we can uh, activate, and that could be from a common alerting program or a CAP message that comes from another system or a local municipality or government. Uh, it could be from our, our mobile app, uh, one of your emergency managers or security directors on site actually issuing an all clear when the, the message is, uh, when the incident is cleared up. Could be are using our threat watcher to connect to uh, NOAA weather alerts to uh, notify of uh, severe weather, weather, those kind of things. So there's really a lot of different ways we could bring in information, capture information, and then notify people through all of the primary endpoints that you see here. Uh, and we're going to focus today on the, uh, the digital signage and cable TV aspect of that. So with that, um, you'll notice that uh, left and right, the cable TV and digital signage look very similar. 
there's a lot of different ways that we uh, integrate and take over their screens depending on what technology you have deployed and we'll really get into some of the details there. Uh, but we're able to uh, take those over and get those into high occupancy areas. Generally, you're putting your digital signage either in entryways, areas where you've got a, lot, a number of people congregating, think, areas where you want to deliver a, an everyday message. Well, we want to be able to use that during an emergency, especially since the, there's a lot of thought that's gone into where those are placed, to be able to transform those devices into intelligent emergency alerting devices. We can also do that on cable TV. It's a different technology for cable TV and how that's delivered, but we have solutions there to, uh, to interrupt that as well so you can uh, get that notification out. Key features of, of this uh, solution set, it's, it's immediate. Uh, you'll notice when we do the demonstration that as soon as I hit send, within seconds those, those, uh, the message is sent out and uh, those screens are taken over, so uh, it gets messed up very quickly. It's customizable. You can change some colors, some aspects of that. Uh, it scrolls so that you can see the, the text and message from a distance. It's what people are used to seeing from the emergency broadcast system, you know, those kind of things, a scrolling message. You're also able to personalize this by putting your logo within this so that the, uh, the recipients know that it's coming from your organization. It's not coming from the local or federal government. It's not the emergency broadcast system. It's actually your um, emergency managers issuing that alert, and it's a timely and targeted amount of alert. Uh, it's very integrated, so uh, we're also able to, at the same time, activate our wall-mated alert beacons, digital uh, signage, cable TV, marquees, all those kind of different things, uh, our PA systems. So, you know, it's, it's not a different process for activating a digital signage. It's the same as you would activate any message. It's just a matter of you're, you're uh, configuring that ahead of time so that the linkages are in place so that we take those over uh, when the message is issued. How it works, an emergency alert can be issued, uh, initiated through a variety of sources. As I mentioned, it could be the alerts console, mobile app, panic buttons, you know, inbound activations. You could even activate it out of your personal recipient service that you have. There's a lot of uh, connection points so that it's very easy so you can go to one place to activate. Uh, all the notification points check in with the server so we can actually supervise those endpoints to, to confirm that they're available and ready to activate. And then once the alert's activated, any kind of acknowledgments are tracked through the system and reported as well. So uh, with digital signage options, I want to really focus in on some of the details around how we'll integrate with some of these signage systems because uh, if you're familiar with these, there's a lot of different ways uh, that the digital signage systems are displayed and integrated. There's anything from a, a PC that's behind a, a screen that's maybe an old retired PC that connect to the network. We've got a solution to that. It could be a, uh, you know, a single digital media player that's out there with content. It could be an integrated uh, content management server system. Uh, all the way through, too, we've even seen uh, sometimes uh, digital signage is developed and deployed as a service, uh, SaaS-based architecture. We have uh, solutions to integrate with that. So, Gary, I really want to bring you in on this piece because you've got a lot of experience with this. We've got a number of uh, the signage systems we've integrated, but uh, talk a little bit about kind of the different um, services and how, how broadly our, our technology applies uh, sure. for our customers. Yeah, so with digital signage, it's important to realize there's a lot of different players in the market space, um, and it's not really a one-size-fits-all solution. Um, it really varies depending on the, the signage player. You know, there's some, some are embedded signage players, some have a centralized content manager, um, some support protocols such as CAP or Common Alert Protocol. Uh, some have custom APIs. It really runs the gambit. Um, so there's a wide variety of different things. So um, we, you know, uh, we have a bunch of different approaches to, to try to integrate into those different solutions. So we're going to cover those in the next couple slides a little more in detail, the most common ways. Um, but some of the ones you see here, like black box physics, four wind scale, upright sign. Those are some ones we've integrated with. There's a lot of other larger players as well that we've uh, we've tied into. But um, these, even these are different. Like physics uses CAP for activation, black box has their own API, you know, RSS, Atom feeds can be used as well in some cases, so we'll cover those. All right, excellent. Thank you uh, for the overview on that. I, I want to, um, I guess, pause here before I jump into the, the tech details of how we do this and let our uh, existing customers know that if you're under an existing support contract, we actually include this, the feature and capability to interact and, and integrate within that support contract. So uh, if you're interested and you want to want to explore this further, Give us a, a call to the support team, and they'll they'll evaluate each of the systems you have and make uh, appropriate recommendation. Uh, if you're a, a prospective customer and you're looking at our solution, 
this is a big plus that it's, it's included within the, the support contract and, and the solution we provide. So uh, it's a matter of uh, when you're ready to start connecting systems up, evaluating, uh, you know, once you're a customer, we, we can go through or during your implementation process, we can go through and get those set up just as part of your service. It's not an extra charge and, you know, uh, a very, a very difficult thing to uh, get in place and support. So that's a huge plus. So um, if you're an existing customer, you know, give us a call. Let's, uh, let's start looking at some of those systems and get those connected up. If you're looking at being a customer, it's, it's an easy add to, uh, to include this as part of your strategy. So to jump back kind of into the technical details, uh, you know, this, this uh, screen kind of shows the ability, you know, when you've got additional players out at each of these signs, we can actually uh, put software out on and deploy these so that you can target individual signs, control that separately, or in the next slide we'll, uh, we'll touch on how you can actually uh, interface with the content management system. Uh, Gary, do you want to add anything to kind of this approach? Yeah, this approach, we actually install our own client on there. So we have our own Windows-based uh, digital science client. It's installed on each player. Um, it has a lot of benefits. It, it overrides the actual display. Um, it has serial input control if you need to override various devices. Um, but it's, it's a nice solution because there's a lot of monitoring. Um, you know it's always online. It communicates back to the alert server. So you'll get a notification if, you're, if the, the player or the client isn't running, which is a big benefit of this method. So it does have a reporting capability built in. Um, so it's really just a, a good way to kind of tie into um, any kind of generic um, science solution that has a Windows-based OS. You know, we're also working on um, solutions for, you know, Linux and Mac as well, but um, it's our most popular version. Excellent. Thank you, Gary. And uh, for the non-technical uh, individuals, uh, generally when I'm doing a site survey, if you're looking at your, uh, your digital signage, sometimes you'll see a little box that's got a network connection behind it. Uh, generally, that's your your player, uh, and the IT group uh, is aware of how to how to add that software to that player. So uh, another option uh, is also to when uh, you know you've got a content management server. So this is distributing to multiple signs. It's controlled centrally. Uh, you can actually uh, connect up and have uh, the Alertus server in the mix to control whether you know the the digital the regular content is being displayed or the emergency message is displayed. And Gary, do you want to talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, today it's um, becoming increasingly popular to have cloud-based uh, digital science solutions. So typically the content um, you know, might not be stored locally. It might be derived from a web URL or, or some kind of um, cloud-based solution. So um, this diagram here really shows that if you have players or even a, a server, either one would be fine, um, displaying uh, web content, we can basically have the Alertus server act as a proxy. So you can have the players uh, point to the Alertus server um, to display their content, and in a non-emergency situation, we would basically um, allow that request to go to the, the normal content source, um, you know, typically a URL that you provided. So um, during a non-emergency situation, um, the alert would be displayed, or the normal content would be displayed, I'm sorry. Um, however, if an alert happens, the alert server would then kind of like flip a switch and basically redirect um, the content to a web page displayed on the server itself. So we would generate a content web page that, would, that you could customize as well. Um, that would display the content. So this is just another option that is kind of a novel approach, um, mainly tailored towards um, you know players that display web content as um, you know, for their content. Excellent. So yeah. So when you're doing your investigation on what kind of signage systems you have uh, to work with us on uh, implementing that, you know, questions asked is you know do we have a content management server? Uh, you know, if not, is it is it delivered as a service or software as a service? Uh, the good news is we've got a, a solution that applies to, you know, all of those different uh, uh, ways of deploying and managing your uh, digital signage. So this is kind of the third, which uh, would be an on-site on content management server. And we can integrate with those either with, through, Gary, through the API, through a CAP, an RSS feed. It may even be installing some software on that. that that system, any others? Uh, yeah, well? so this is typically, um, this slide really shows a typical, typically a proprietary integration. So a lot of the vendors have a, a cap-based API or even a proprietary API that we can push a message to. Um, there's a lot of benefits to this solution. Obviously, you know, we're pushing the alert, so it's, it's almost immediate in most cases. A lot of times we'll push to a content management server, which will then control the content on the players. So we're increasingly seeing this much more, uh, being much more frequently used by a lot of digital science vendors. So um, this is definitely an up-and-coming 
um, area. Now, obviously, if it's proprietary API, every vendor has their own solution. Um, so we've developed a couple um, alert services in the alert system that um, are kind of custom developed to allow a lot of this um, outbound API integration in a friendly way. So even if we don't support an out-of-the-box integration, many times we can just spend a little time with the implementation team to try to work with the API of the vendor and um, in many cases develop a solution with our existing code. So um, that's nice because there's no additional custom development that's included in our ENS. Um, it's called our custom HTTP alert service. So that's a, a very common way. But um, really this varies by the vendor. It can be a REST API, a SOAP API, a CAP API. Um, but like we said, there's a lot of benefits as it, as it's a push essentially. So we're, we're setting the alert out immediately. Excellent. Thank you, Gary. Uh, before I jump into the cable TV, I just want to note again, now that you're starting to see how there's a lot of different ways we can integrate with these uh, different technologies, that's really the huge value of that, that support contract because it's a lot of us spending some time uh, gathering information and then, and then working on the, the best way to integrate that provides the, the alerting you need and the targeting of the alert. So it's, it's really a big part of us working together with the implementation process and then after, uh, after once you're an existing customer, having the option to call in at any time when a, a new sign-in system is added and that kind of thing to uh, ensure that's part of your system. So we're going to shift gears a little bit to cable TV override. Cable TV is a little bit different because that's a different technology on how the, the cable TV actually reaches the, the screens and those kind of things. But uh, generally, uh, you know, that technology comes in. It's a cable TV feed coming either into a head-end system, coming into a building, and then getting distributed from there. So uh, what we really focus on is using the ability to uh, use the existing equipment in place. So if you've got a head-end where you're distributing cable TV, either through dorms, maybe it's through throughout your, uh, your corporate campus, we really want to use a lot of the existing equipment that's there and just do a, a software interface to allow you to control that. So uh, this uh, kind of setup here shows a, a common head-end system where the cable TV comes in, and there's a uh, these two boxes shown are uh, from a company called Monroe. They're generally installed with a cable TV system, and what they do is they, they use a comb filter which interrupts the existing feed of all the different channels, and then switches it to the emergency broadcast feed. Well, that there are 189, and there's a number of different products out there that do that same feature is basically the emergency broadcast equipment. When uh, the emergency broadcast message is sent, it goes to that equipment and then distributes that throughout the region, throughout the country, depending on who's issuing that alert. Well, you've got that equipment in place. We use that and allow you to have local control of that by being able to push a message to that and, and, uh, and then take over the cable TV system. If you don't already have this equipment in place, we can work with you to uh, to um, set up the right equipment, and uh, then we just make the connection to that that equipment, and allows you to then uh, take over that message. Gary, I know you uh, you deliver the uh, and put together and develop this specific integration. Uh, any additional notes for? Yeah, I, just, I think you did a really good job explaining this. I just want to add that um, you know the R one eight nine or whatever the PAS device we're interfacing with is really purpose built for emergency notifications. This is really the preferred method, as you have this EAS based equipment already on site. Um, and all we really do is just communicate directly with it. Um, in our, in the R189's case, it's a cap alert. Um, so it's really kind of using the existing channels to override um, channels. Um, and in addition to that, you get you know EAS capability if you don't have a device like this already. So any kind of EAS alert you would get on your cable TV, which is another, another big bonus. And a lot of times regulations, um, depending on the organization, you know, may require that. But um, if you're an organization that doesn't have, have that required, that's a nice benefit as well, getting the EAS alerts from the government. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, the next one's uh, also a way to do this without the, having the, the, say the EAS box in place. Uh, we can also put a, uh, a PC or a server in place that when the, the uh, message comes in, it uses that comb filter to switch all the channels to a display that, that is very much the, the digital signage, cable TV, um, multimedia display and message. So it's just uh, instead of using, say, an industry standard box, you can put software in place uh, that, that switches all the channels over to that, that software and displays uh, what you want. Uh, so Gary, any other additional uh, thoughts on, on Yeah, it's basically very similar to the last slide, with the exception of, right, so having a dedicated um, purpose-built box, you have a, a server or a, a desktop or any kind of computer, really. So um, this, is, this you know, provides similar functionality. Um, 
typically we'll do like a relay box to, to trigger things with RS-232 because our we'll typically run our client on the actual the screen. So um, when the content gets switched, it actually gets switched to the content of the monitor, and the monitor displays our alert um, based on our digital signage or cable TV override client. So it's kind of a all-in-one solution. Um, so you, this, the, the main difference between this solution and the previous slide is that uh, the previous slide, the actual display would be whatever the um, whatever the uh, EAS box would display, so the typical EAS message in most cases, um, whereas in this case, the actual um, alert would be um, our digital signage client display, so that, that you see from the image there with the alert text and the scrolling text is what you'd see. All right, perfect. And as you can see, there's a couple different ways to support the, uh, the messaging. Uh, the nice thing is, just like the digital signage, the software to, to this interface is included within your uh, support contract and, and implemented uh, with, with either part of your implementation or uh, in the future if you decide to add this. Uh, we'll work with you uh, on the industry standard hardware that might need to be per, uh, purchased and put in place for the software uh, to, to accomplish this as part of uh, what you have installed today or what you're looking at potentially installing. Uh, at this point, I want to shift gears for a final time, and uh, let's jump into a, uh, a demo. So I'm going to jump out of the slide deck momentarily. Uh, I'm going to turn on a web camera, and you're going to see our uh, our demo system appearing here, and you're going to be able to see basically what we have on that solution diagram of all the different capabilities is actually uh, in person here. And uh, in the upper left, uh, you'll see a uh, TV, cable TV feed, We've got a um, standard, it looks like a standard show on uh, morning show. And on the right, that's a digital signage system that's kind of scrolling through you know, different examples of uh, content that might be displayed. We also have a lot of the other information uh, and endpoints here, computer desktops. You'll see a, pop, a desktop pop up over my screen when that's set. Uh, PA system, you'll hear a text-to-speech announcement, those kind of things. And then I'll also uh, go ahead and uh, log in to our user interface where I'll be able to uh, cancel, update, uh, manage some of these messages. And that could be managed over a, a, an iPhone, an Android device, you know, any kind of our interfaces to be able to cancel, manipulate, and change, or issue alerts. So I really want to start with uh, a situation that a lot of our customers bring to us, which is a, a lockdown, and say an intruder alert, where you want to get a message out instantly. You don't want to have to log into your phone, log into a PC, or something like that. So we've actually set up a panic button to activate that. So I'm going to push that panic button to show you how quickly everything activates. You'll see the, the cable TV and the digital signage just taken over, the desktop. We've even got our uh, desktop right now in screensaver in a sleep mode. Uh, you'll also see the message come up over that. So that's one of the new, new advancements, uh, which you'll, you'll see released uh, this summer. So it's some really exciting things you'll see part of this demo. So without ado, I'll go ahead and uh, hit the out lockdown. Press that button. That activates. You'll see everything uh, immediately activating. We've got the desktop notification. I'll acknowledge that. But you'll hear the VoIP phone notification. Intruder lockdown in effect. Proceed to a secure location on the interior of the building, away from doors and windows. Await further instructions. And then that was our uh, text-to-speech as well uh, to announce the emergency either over your PA system or your fire alarm system. So you'll see I canceled that message out, and uh, you'll see that the digital signage went back to its original content. The cable TV shifted back to uh, the, the channel that it was on, the content it was displaying, without having to do anything from an end user perspective or, or local to any of these devices. So this is really an example of how we give you that, that complete control of your system. Uh, I mentioned that, and it's best practices, you always want to issue an all clear. I've got a preset all clear. I'm going to go ahead and bring that up. I could add a little bit of text here if I wanted to, specific to the emergency, but I just want to go ahead and issue this as is. You'll see um, that here's the, the message we pre-built. You also see that you got confirmation that the alert beacons are going to activate, the desktops are going to be activate, which ones are active. But you can also see that the digital signage and cable TV are reporting back that they're going to be activated as part of this notification. If you see that there's one digital display and no, and the device is on, online, you then know that uh, that device isn't going to be taken over at the point of activation. Furthermore, I'll, I'll show a quick report, but you can monitor that. So if that uh, device were to go on, offline, you could have it send you a message. You could see that in the web interface when it's offline. So I'll go ahead and hit send on the all clear. 
you'll see instantly uh, the desktop notifications um, and then the uh, cable TV override, those kind of things. I'll cancel that out. So we've all clear. issued the all clear. The emergency condition is over. Reach. And then cancel all that out. Uh, just to give you a quick idea for some of, the, some of our customers that are familiar with the interface, when you go through, when you develop your message, which is basically text, uh, you determine where you want to locate and, and uh, send that message, how long you want to send it. Uh, selecting cable TV endpoints uh, and also digital signage is just a matter of clicking on the, uh, the different alert services to select those. So if you want to create a custom message or your preset, you can either select or deselect those different endpoints uh, right within the, uh, the activation interface. So it's very easy to do on the fly as well. I'm going to go ahead and uh, shut down the uh, web screen and jump in just real briefly to, uh, to the, some of the reporting capabilities. Uh, you'll see an alert history. You'll see all the messages we sent. Uh, you can bring up, say, this all clear. You can look at the different details of it. You can even say that, okay, yeah, did we send that to our digital signage? Yeah, we sent it to cable TV. We sent it to digital signage override you know, who activated that. You can even see who was act activated the, the message, those kind of things. You can bring up uh, the devices that were acknowledgement. So we've got a, a after report or report real time on device activations, the acknowledgements. You saw the uh, acknowledgement of the desktop. So that's really key to being able to, uh, you know, ensure that that message went out and is being received and acknowledged by your recipients. The last one I mentioned is the supervision. So, uh, you know, we can see here that the digital sign signage override, the cable TV override, that those are connected and reporting back as, as active and ready to receive a message. So uh, we can either uh, set this report out to email to your administrator from time to time for, to verify that all devices are online. You can even set up uh, rules that will send a message or an email when one of these devices goes offline. So uh, if someone were to unplug or turn off one of your digital signage systems, you would know that as an administrator uh, of the system and be able to investigate that. So it's really the ability to, to manage your system and all the endpoints without having to go around to each one of them and verify them and adding more to your, your uh, maintenance uh, routines. It's more a matter of remotely, you can just add a few minutes to check in on the system, make sure it's up and operational, everything's connected. So that's really huge time savers for those that implement the system and, and maintain it. So at this point, uh, this kind of concludes the, the demo and, and focus on our digital signage and cable TV system. I'd like to uh, turn the uh, uh, meeting back over to Sharice to uh, moderate our uh, Q&A. So thank you very much, and Sharice. All right. Thanks, Ryan and Gary. We are now beginning the Q&A session of our presentation. If you have a question, please submit them through the chat or question box. Please note if we do not get to your question during this session, a representative will reach out to you to answer your question directly. A recording of this webinar will also be shared with you after today's presentation. So let's begin with our first question. Um, what is the implementation timeline like? Oh, that's an excellent question. And I'll touch on it briefly, and then Gary, since he's implemented a lot of these, uh, can, can add a little bit as well. Uh, it really depends on, you know, what system technology you're using, uh, those kind of things. We definitely want to engage your, your IT group that manages or whoever's managing these signs to do that. It's really up to organizing everybody and getting it done. Uh, we've had customers that have implemented these systems while on the phone on a half hour, you know, support call and been able to do it very quickly. If there's a little bit more players and moving parts, it might take a little longer to, to bring everybody together. Gary, what's with some of your experience in uh, actually implementing some of these? Yeah, it really depends on the implementation method, as we mentioned earlier. Um, cable TV does tend to take a little longer because there's hardware involved in most cases. Um, but digital science can definitely be done in a short period of time. Um, sometimes, you know, like a day or, um, you know, if there's an API integration involved, it might take a, a little longer than that. But um, if it's something we already support, it could take, you know, minutes if it's that easy uh, to do. So. Um, definitely, like, you know, approach this with your unique case, and we'd be happy to look into it and give you a more estimate, a, a more appropriate estimate on time. Perfect. Yeah, and, and as you see, there's so many different ways to connect. We'll spend the time to figure out the best way to connect, easiest way, uh, the one that fulfills all your requirements, and then then uh, implement it, work with you on that. Okay. Thanks. 
Um, do you have a solution for Chrome OS players? We currently use Rise Vision with Chrome boxes. Gary, is this one you've worked with yet? I'm not familiar with that solution. Um, we are definitely looking into some Chrome OS uh, based solutions outside of digital science to alert you know, Chromebooks and things like that. So um, we certainly will take a look at that. Um, if there is an API or, or some or some way to do that, that's, that's one um, integration method we could certainly pursue. Um, also, we didn't really mention on this call, but RSS and uh, Atom feeds are, is another way that a lot of times um, you can kind of tie into these digital science players. Um, so the Lotus server itself can generate an RSS or Atom feed. Um, there are some disadvantages of that approach. Um, it's typically a little slower because the digital science player has to pull the Alerta server. Um, but it's, it's a very universally, um, typically accepted format for digital science. So that might be a solution there. Um, and obviously Chromebook wouldn't run Windows, so our, our client probably wouldn't be the best fit there. But I'd say we could look into either API or maybe an RSS uh, or Atom integration there, perhaps. Excellent. Yeah, that's a good question, and uh, you know that would be one to give us a call. Uh, what our engineers generally do is they'll research into it to see if there's any of those hooks and uh, and how those might get connected and work with you to set those up or connect them. Uh, we're always looking for, you know, we, we get all, a lot of different requests, uh, you know, different technologies because there's so many vendors out there that allow you to uh, display content, manage it, those kind of things. Yeah, that's a lot of my day day, -day job is I, I reach out to a lot of these vendors and I you know try to talk to their technical folks and try to decide the best way to integrate and um, you know each one's different. Some of them support like like canceling alert. You saw we you know our, our alert got canceled pretty quickly. Some vendors you know do support cancel, some don't support cancel. Um, it really just runs the gambit on what their solution provides and, and how it works. All right, excellent. Great. Um, has your system worked with Rise Vision's uh, digital platform before? Um, I don't, I, I'm not familiar with um, that exact one, but okay. we, uh, um, unfortunately, I, I don't think so. But we can definitely look into that. And, you know, a number of times, you know, we've implemented these things. Uh, so yeah, our support, our support line of call, and then they'll either recognize it or jump into the process for how they how they implement and integrate. Yeah, there's really a lot. There's a lot of solutions. I want to say almost over 100 is what I've seen. There's just so many different. Industries like you know, food service has their own like digital science solutions. Um, you know, airports have, airports their, own have their own. Yeah, so it's, it's broken down by industry. It's broken by down by vertical. So we've really tried to you know devise different techniques um, to really tackle it that way. So a lot of times we you know we talk to the vendor. We'll ask you know what platform are you running on? What OS are you running on? Do you have an API? Do you support CAP? Um, you know, how's your how's your player work? Is it centralized? Is there a um, a central player or is everything distributed? Are you getting web content? So um, those are all things that we definitely um, you know, want, to, want to get into. Yeah, so the, the key being uh, you don't have to be the expert on these things. Uh, we, we do it every day. So <laughs> we, we can be your expert as part of that. Yeah, we've been working with a small, a small school, um, like you know, a small boarding school has like an Apple TV-based digital science solution. So later today I'll be looking at um, you know, tying into that. We have a little more unconventional approach of using like a you know, switch box and Apple TV connected to each each you know actual device, so it's not quite as efficient as you know having a centralized method. But if you have a couple TVs in odd places, you can even you know integrate them that way by using um, some unconventional methods or like a you know an art, like a HDMI switch box attached to our digital client. Very right, excellent. Uh, for an organization that has two locations that are a few miles apart, um, going through their server can in both locations receive messaging through Alertus. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, so grouping is, you know, obviously depends. This is another area where it depends on the vendor what they support. As far as our client, if, if, it, if we are installing the alert as a digital science or a cable TV client, um, we definitely support grouping there because each device is essentially an alert device, and you can assign those to groups. So, um, you could, you know, activate both campuses or a single campus. You could even assign like a latitude and longitude to those devices and use our map interface if you want to do some kind of like geographic alert. Um, and draw a polygon of some kind, but that's, that's a little more advanced, but some customers you know, do like that flexibility. So yeah, grouping is definitely a, a big part of that integration discussion that we have when we talk to the vendors and the, and the customers to get that set up. Yeah, definitely. And uh, based upon Alertus being a software, uh, IP-based, uh, it doesn't really matter for us whether the digital science system is in the same building as the software in our, our control, or if it's across the, the campus, across the world, you know, across the country. Uh, if there's a, a way to get a um, web-based communication between those sites, 
there's any kind of internet connection, we, we can uh, we can have that message traversed and yeah, get there. Typically, we're on premise, so um, a lot of you, a lot of times, digital signage is on premise. Not always nowadays, but that does help us get access to a lot of these devices as well. So other systems, a lot of other systems are cloud-based. They might not be able to get onto your network to really um, you know communicate with these devices without making a lot of network holes or um, network changes to your infrastructure. Excellent. Uh, and what use case would a customer need to integrate with a vendor, let's say Four Winds or Scala, versus only using Alertis with digital signage? Uh, so we don't offer our own digital signage. We just tie into other systems. So the process would be the same. Um, so, so Scala and Four Winds, for example, we we actually do have several customers that have done integrations of those. So we have detailed we have detailed instructions on you know what steps to follow. You know, it does vary depending on the, the version of Scala or Four Winds or things like that. So it, it's typically a pretty um, pretty straightforward process with the, with the larger vendors that we've worked with before. You know, we'll have notes on what worked for different customers, and we'll say, okay, this vendor we have to use this approach, or you might even have a choice of approaches for a couple of vendors. Like I think Visix supports the CAP alert, and Visix also would support our Windows-based client. So there, there's options there. So um, we really would just you know we'd work with you directly and the, and the vendor to determine the best solution. Oh, that's a that's a good point, Gary. That sometimes uh, customers don't really uh, understand is that we don't actually build digital signage systems. Uh, yeah. There's so many different types out there for different industries, as we were discuss discussing earlier. So we don't. It's hard to build a one size fits all. So we look to uh, you know using the existing systems out there. If you don't have any digital signage and you're looking to do that, you know find the one that's right for your business and uh, we'll. We'll integrate with it. Yeah, the large part of digital science um, is really you know content creation, right? You want to create really rich content, you know, videos, really beautiful slides, things like that. I mean, we let the digital science um, you know vendors do that. That's that's what they're good at. They, yeah. they they're really good at content creation and scheduling it and and all that. We're really good at the emergency notification piece, you know, overriding it, um, you know, kind of tying tying it into a single point activation, you know, doing integrations where we have a, a strong a strong core there. So we try to let them do their best thing, and we try to do our best thing, and um, it works out pretty well, I think. Yeah, definitely, because there's systems that are just very basic. You know, you've got one choice to display one bit of content, or there's some that are really complex. I know, uh, and, and provide a lot of features. Like uh, we work a lot with physics, and they can do room scheduling and content management, all kinds of really fancy things. Uh, you know, it all depends on do you need something very basic or something that that can handle a lot of functions throughout your business. Uh, and then we just look to uh, leverage that investment. Uh, by connecting emergency management to it. Okay, and our last question for today, what kind of IT background uh, workload is needed to support this? Can it merit a full-time person? Wow, uh, this would be a good one for, for Gary to, to um, discuss, but <laughs> sure. um, no, it definitely doesn't require a full-time person. I think you, you find somebody with a little bit of knowledge and you know, within a, a few hours or a few days, you can get this set up. Right. So we have so many different types of customers. So I'm going to answer this question. Um, I'm guessing it's probably from a smaller customer, maybe like a, a small school or maybe a nonprofit entity or, or anything like that. Um, I mean, typically, as far as the, the digital science piece is concerned, I think if you have a digital, if you have a, um, a desktop person who, for your enterprise, works on you know desktops or computers, in most cases, we can work with them to do the digital science client installation and setup if we're going that route. Um, for the API route, we can sometimes even sidestep um, an individual there. So I wouldn't think you would need to hire anyone to maintain this. Um, you know, the reporting and things like that, we, we built into the system to make it easy to maintain and to alert you. So um, I think it's really just something that you just need someone who's had some te some technical know-how always helps. <laughs> you know, there's different levels of, of skill. But um, maybe, I'm, maybe a computer tech or an IT resource or a support technician that we could work with. Yeah, these, these technologies aren't super complex. Uh, but it does require somebody that has a little bit of knowledge. Yeah. Or I mean, a lot of times, if you have a digital science system, you have someone who's creating the content, managing it already. So we can work with that individual. Or cable TV, certainly. If you have a head end, you usually have a, a, a couple of cable TV uh, technicians there. So we can just work with those existing people in most cases. Excellent. Yep. We have now concluded our Q&A session for our presentation. Again, if we did not get to your question, we will directly reach out to you with an answer. If you have any questions or need additional information, please feel free to email marketing at alertis.com and we will be happy to assist. If you are looking for more information on Alertis and our solutions, visit our website at www.alertis.com. Or if you're interested in upcoming webinars, visit www.alertis.com backslash webinars to see the full schedule. Thank you for joining today's webinar. We look forward to meeting you again soon.